Alrighty then. Well, it is time for another author reading. And today I'm going to be doing chapter six of Shallow Seeds, the first story in my crime anthology, Life Star Corners. So um, I've already read the past five chapters. They are available on my channel. Just scroll down and check them out. Unless you want to start at this one, it's totally up to you. So let's get started. Chapter six. When he woke up, Calvin found himself lying on his side across the front seats of his car. His side ached from the small storage compartment, crushing in, into it. Outside, it was pitch black. As he turned the car back on, the clock on the radio read 11 minutes past midnight. Calvin had been in that spot for seven fucking hours. He got up and tried to rub away the unbearable headache that made him wish he had died. Did he die? No way. He was still alive. He must have overdosed. But no one had come to help him. How had he been so extraordinarily lucky? How many people did he know that OD'd and received medical attention and still died? Yet, he had no help. He just lost consciousness for a few hours. That should have been it. Then he remembered the events that led up to him blacking out. And he thought about what that cop Whitson had said. The guy knew where he lived. Calvin considered blowing town for a little while. But then he thought about Roger. Roger wouldn't just pick up and leave at a moment's notice. And Calvin sure shit wasn't going to let anything happen to him. But where was he going to get the six grand by morning? He couldn't even use Shop and Drive because who was ordering groceries at midnight? Calvin scrolled the app for customers. But of course, there were no customers at the moment. Even his premium customers weren't online. The premium customers. All those guys were drug dealers. One of them had to have some money lying around. As much as Calvin hated the idea of fucking over someone he did business with, he felt he had no choice. Besides, didn't drug dealers just have this coming from time to time? It's not like they were honest people. He went through his mental Rolodex remembering all the drug dealers he got groceries for. Who was the biggest scumbag? Simon Grosswell came to mind. Aside from being a drug dealer, the guy was known prick to just about everyone he came across. Of all the dealers that Calvin interacted with, he was the most unpleasant. The dickhead wouldn't even give him a tip on the app. Yeah, he can get the big screw. Calvin recalled his address and drove the car out of the parking lot, taking it right in the direction of Grosswell's house. It was incredibly risky, and he thought about turning around. Simon had to have at least a few guns stashed around the house, and Calvin didn't have the peace Ralph had given him. If this was bad, if this went bad, he was fucked. Maybe he wouldn't be home. Simon's two-story Tudor house sat on the north side of the street, along a row of similarly affluent houses with freshly cut lawns, thanks to a professional landscaping company and their own neighborhood watch. It was the type of community that everyone wished they could live in, where everyone was legitimate and educated, or at least they all appeared to be. But thankfully, Simon's car wasn't in the driveway, so Calvin parked his car on the street a few houses down and got out. He closed the door quietly, not even closing it all the way for fear of waking up one of Simon's neighbors. He didn't expect many more breaks tonight. Calvin donned a pair of purple gloves from his pocket, a habit he developed during his years of petty thievery. He approached the house, taking cover under the trees that lined the street. Every so often, he looked around for someone peering out at him, but there was no one. Calvin reached the house, but he had to dive into the bushes that stood below one of the front windows when the motion light turned on. He almost pissed himself out of fear. Jesus, how could he forget about the motion light? Of course, these people would have their own decent security systems. Sound probably had an alarm system inside the house as well. But it was just a risk Calvin would have to take. And he didn't need to take a whole lot. Just enough to cover the six grand he owed that scumbag of a cop. He snuck around to the back of the house and was grateful that there wasn't a fence to climb over. The back side of the house did not have a motion light, which Calvin found odd. But he noticed the security camera and doorbell camera that were probably synced up to Simon's phone. So the back door was out, because he didn't want to get too close for them to register movement and alert Simon. But Simon wasn't home. Calvin looked at the windows and decided that he'd have to break one in order to get access. The windows on the first floor were large and would make a lot of noise if he shattered one of them. He settled for one of the basement windows. Calvin found a decent-sized rock in the backyard and threw it at the glass. It shattered, and then he found another rock and cleared the window sill of any extra glass that could cut him as he climbed inside. Seeing that it was safe to enter... He snuck inside the dark basement. Calvin gave his eyes a chance to adjust to the darkness. Moonlight shone through the two basement windows, giving him a chance to better see his surroundings. Getting inside the house was the easy part. It was finding what he was looking for. If there was actually anything to find, that was the hard part. He shuddered at the thought that he was wasting his time and potentially ruining a business relationship for nothing. Despite how Simon was as a person, he was still a reliable customer. 
The first logical spot where Simon might have had money would be in his bedroom. So Calvin navigated his way up the basement stairs to the first floor. Then he walked across the spacious living room toward a hardwood staircase that led to the second floor. He stopped at the top and looked over the railing and onto the ground level. For just a moment, he reflected on his own choices. How, if he had kept his shit together, maybe he could have gotten a house like this. Well, fuck it, he was in one now. There were three rooms on the top floor. The first was a bathroom, so Calvin skipped it for now. He opened the second door and saw the king-sized bed with the 50-inch flat screen across the room and a huge mahogany dresser. This had to be the master bedroom. Calvin turned on the little flashlight he brought with him and got to work. He looked between the mattresses and under the bed. No money. He looked inside the closet. No money. He ransacked the dresser. No money. He searched through the closet one more time, knocking on the walls and listening for a hollow sound that would indicate a false wall. There had been a friend in the past who would hit his money exactly like that. But that was not the case here, so the master bedroom was out. Calvin tried the smaller bedroom, but he had no more luck than in the master bedroom. He tried the bathroom, but it was bare. That finished off the second floor. He groaned to the thought of searching the ground floor. God only knew how much time that would take. Then, just as he was about to descend the stairs, he heard the front door open, and he felt like he could throw up. Simon came home. Calvin hid behind the wall and watched Simon's lanky frame as he walked in with a much younger woman on his arm. Simon was an average-looking man, but the blonde was drop-dead gorgeous. They talked and laughed, which gave Calvin enough cover to quietly close the doors to the bathroom and master bedroom before hiding in the guest bedroom. He kept the door open a crack so he could hear downstairs. Simon was doing most of the talking, but his speech was slurred. Good. At least he might be too drunk to remember anything if he caught Calvin. But robbing the place was out. There was no way Calvin could pull this off, not unless he threatened Simon and his lady friend, which would give him more problems if he ended up in court at the end of the day. He just narrowly avoided a felony murder conviction when Ralph got killed. Thank God the bartender had showed him mercy. Did he really want that sort of confrontation again? He tried, and that was good enough. Maybe he could go to Roger and have Roger take out a personal loan at the bank. In hindsight, that was the smarter plan. Is that how low Calvin had gone? That he couldn't even think like a regular citizen anymore? How had simply asking for a loan been the very last measure to take? Why was stealing so much more comfortable? I need money, so I have to steal it or drop off drugs or scam somebody, he thought to himself. Jesus, what a life. Now the question was how he was going to get out of the house without getting caught. He looked outside and saw the bushes below him. It wouldn't be the most comfortable of drops, but it was better than breaking a leg. So he opened the window and was about to climb out when he thought of something. Calvin looked back at the closet and thought it was worth a shot. He still had some time hearing what sounded like a bottle getting uncorked downstairs. Opening the closet door, he looked around. Then he noticed a particular detail that most people, including police, might miss. The floor in the closet in the master bedroom was hardwood floor, while the rest had been carpet. In this closet, it was all carpet. Calvin felt around the edge of the carpet and saw that it was loose. He pulled on it, and the carpet came up in his hands. Underneath the carpet, in the closet, was a square cavity in the floor with a small lockbox inside. Calvin grabbed it and ran for the window. He dropped the lockbox into the bushes and followed his new prize all the way down. The bushes were indeed rough, but they were quiet, and they broke his fall perfectly. He snatched the lockbox from where it landed and bolted back to his car. A second later, he drove off into the night. This concludes chapter six of uh, Life Star Corners. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you are interested in purchasing a copy of Life Star Corners, they are available on Amazon for Kindle, Kindle Unlimited, or paperback. Or you can always go onto my website with my personal email on there and message me if you want a signed copy for yourself. You can also sign up to my email subscription there on jamesmichaelsbooks.com. Um, to get updates on any new books I have coming out, deals, events, uh, content, things of that nature.